Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and welcome to Grandma's house. Why am I here? Well, because Grandma has a computer that she uses to keep up with the grandkids on Facebook, to print out recipes, and to type up notes for her book club. But much like Grandpa, her computer really isn't performing like it used to. It takes forever to boot up and when she finally gets it turned on, it's just slow and pretty frustrating to be on overall. So I'm here to fix it. The computer. And the computer in question is the HP Pavilion A6600F. This PC hails from 2008 and is rocking a 2.2 gigahertz dual core Intel Pentium E2200 processor, a whopping three gigabytes of DDR2 800 megahertz memory, integrated NVIDIA GeForce 7100 graphics, and a 3.5 inch, 320 gigabyte hard drive. And despite those specs, this PC has been upgraded from its original Windows Vista all the way up to Windows 10. Now, I could just build grandma a new computer with new components relatively inexpensively, but Grandma stopped sending me birthday cards with $20 bills years ago. Besides, it won't be long before Grandma goes to the retirement community and she'll just end up leaving it to Cousin Joni because she's just so unlucky in love. Speaking of Cousin Joni, Grandma asked her to take a look at this PC a while back and see if she can see why it was running so slow because if there's one thing Cousin Joni's good at is assessing problems and finding solutions. Her assumption was there's got to be a virus. So she installed two competing antivirus programs, an anti-malware app, and CCleaner, all of which are enabled at startup and all of which are trying to update simultaneously, completely maxing out the small amount of system resources this system has, making it impossible to do anything else. But congrats, Joni. There aren't any viruses. Now, in Joni's defense, well, that's, that's a phrase I've never uttered before. Anyway, the possibilities of viruses and malware can be a cause of performance degradation of a system that is primarily used by less technically adept users. However, it's usually not the primary cause, especially in a system this old. The three main causes in order are one, and old failing mechanical hard drive. Mechanical hard drives start to fail pretty much from day one and on average have about a five year lifespan. This one has more than double that. The second is thermal throttling due to thermal interface material degradation. The thermal paste between the CPU and the CPU cooler dries out and stops working. And finally, component failure. So the first thing I did after blowing all the dust out of it and discovering Joni's handiwork was to check for those three issues. The hard drive was a no-brainer. It's 12 years old and sounds like a spoon in a garbage disposal when it runs. So I have a brand new 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch SSD to replace it with. Now I didn't load up more software to check the CPU temp, but just from the task manager that when all the bloatware starts up, the CPU core frequency drops well below one gigahertz and the CPU heatsink doesn't even warm up, indicating there's probably a big gap between the IHS and the cold plate where the thermal paste should be. So I'll just pull the cooler and repaste the CPU. Finally, I also noticed in the task manager that only two of the three gigabytes of system memory is showing up. After pulling, reseeding, and switching the RAM sticks, it looks like the one gigabyte stick is dead. So I pulled out my bins of old hardware to see if I had some 800 megahertz DDR2 memory and I didn't. That's okay because I was able to find a two by two gigabyte kit on eBay for under 10 bucks. So Grandma gets a memory upgrade to four gigabytes, which happens to be the max supported by this motherboard. Now, although I didn't have DDR2 in my bins, what I did have was not one, but two socket 775 CPUs that should both be compatible with this system. 
The first is a Core 2 Duo E6850. This is a three gigahertz processor with four megabytes of cache, 1333 megahertz bus speed, and a 65 watt TDP. This is a Conroe CPU, so the same generation as the Pentium in the system, so should just be a drop-in upgrade. The second CPU is also a Core 2 Duo, but from the 45 nanometer Wolfdale generation. This is the E8600 3.3 gigahertz processor with six megabytes of cache, the same 1333 megahertz bus speed and the same 65 watt TDP. Now, because of the die shrink from 65 to 45 nanometers, despite the increased core frequency and cache size, the vid voltage requirements are actually lower so this cpu should be dropping compatible with this system unless the bios was never updated to support this generation of cpus so i guess we'll see and i guess that brings me to the agenda which is very simple i'm gonna replace the old hard drive with the new ssd i'm gonna replace the old memory with the new memory and i'm gonna replace the old pentium with first the e8600 and if that doesn't work the e6850 once all the hardware is replaced and i'm confident it's working i've already pulled the windows 10 product key from this system so i'm gonna do a clean install of windows 10 on the new ssd and optimize the os to run more efficiently on this old hardware so Let's just get started. So I'm just going to start by pulling the old hardware out. I don't, I don't know if that's thermal paste or a science experiment. So switching out the CPU is just a bonus only because I had them in normal situation all you would do here is clean off this old cpu really well and then reapply some thermal paste and reinstall the cooler and i'm going to start with the 8600 Interestingly, this computer is so old, I'm not even sure if there's a mounting position for a two and a half inch hard drive. See what we can make work. Okay, CPU memory and the 
SSD installed, I actually had to just use some double-sided mounted tape to get the SSD installed because in this old case, there's just no mounting positions for two and a half inch hard drives. I got the power connected. I got a display connected. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see if it'll post. All right, it posted. It looks like it's recognizing four gigabytes of memory, our hard drive and our processor, the E8600 at 3.3 gigahertz. All right, looks like the upgrade went good. Let's go ahead and install Windows. So using the Windows Media Creation tool, I've gone ahead and made a bootable USB drive with the Windows install on it. It's gonna plug that into one of our USB ports and reset. Okay, everything went well. Windows is installed and is actually running pretty snappy. The CPU is running at specs and the memory is good. Now, I'm just gonna reconnect the old hard drive and transfer all grandma's personal files to the SSD. Then I just have a couple of pieces of software to install for grandma, Word and Acrobat Reader. Finally, I'll kill all the background apps and notifications and remove some of the bloatware to keep the system running a bit better. Then I'll pop the skirt back on this beauty and take Cousin Joni's title as favorite grandchild. But in all seriousness, if you have an old PC like this that's seen better days and is running like pond water, you don't necessarily need to replace it if you can't afford the few hundred dollars for a new one. A 12 year old PC can still do quite a bit of everyday PC work. You can pick up a 240 to 320 gigabyte SSD for as little as $30 and a couple of bucks for some thermal paste and you'd be surprised just how much life you can breathe back into an old system. Now, even if you need to replace components like I had to replace the memory, that brand new DDR2 kit only cost about $10 and like I said, I didn't really need to replace a CPU, but if I wanted to and I didn't just have spares lying around, you can find these old Core 2 Duos for between like $5 and $20 on the used market. Anyway guys, I hope you learned something. That is why I do what I do. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below and maybe hit that like button. Be sure to get subscribed for some more retro repairs and modern builds. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.